Welcome back to the end of the week podcast. And we are going to talk about one of the major headlines in global news this week. And we're not going to talk about inflation. I said to Piers, he, he raised the topic of inflation because we had US inflation earlier this week. Big event for markets. And I slapped him down. Well, but now, now you've now you've mentioned it. But you said <laughs> we weren't going to talk about it. <laughs> and we're not. I'm sure people follow our social feeds, know all about the fairly boring inflation reading we had out of the US. So we're going to skip over that. And we're going to talk just about TikTok. And not because either Piers or I are uh, content influencers on TikTok, far from it, but we definitely want to talk about this because it's interesting from lots of different things. It's interesting from a, a technology company perspective. It's interesting from a potential M&A perspective from a national security perspective, from polit politics as well. So there's a lot of angles to this story that I think warrants a, a, a thorough discussion on it. So the headline is that the House of Representatives passed a bill on Wednesday this week that would require the TikTok owner ByteDance to sell the social media platform or face a total ban in the United States. So what I wanted to discuss with you, Pierce, is firstly, why are they being banned? How might that ban work in practice? What would it mean for actual users of TikTok? Is TikTok a national security risk? And can TikTok do anything to stop this ban? And any signals here from Trump about what might come down the pipe uh, towards the end of the year? So yeah. Yeah. Why are they being banned? Uh, well, because... The U.S. Uh, House of Representatives um, believe that TikTok, which is owned by ByteDance, which is a Chinese tech giant, um, they're worried really about two things, about security of, of data. Do, does the Chinese government use and, and spy on American citizens um, by having access to ByteDance um data uh, that's number one and number two um does it have an outsized influence on shaping people's opinions in america with obviously an election year now here um obviously that then that that fear you know bubbles right up to the surface so those are the kind of two main sort of incentives here as to why the american politicians are starting to try and take some action yeah and using that app to influence people's decision making did you, did you know the stat of what the average user daily active user time on tiktok is what do you reckon well i do know this so it, it's actually i've got the global average and i've got the u.s average oh, okay that's interesting which yeah. one have you got global um yeah i'm not sure actually so well, you, the, you take the lead on this okay so the global so the amount of minutes spent um by a user on average I mean, this is a kind of crazy stat, but entirely believable. Um, it's 95 minutes per day. I mean, that's that's insane. Isn't and so it? what next question then? So what's the average length of a clip? So what hmm, 15 good, seconds, well, 30 yeah, seconds? So yeah. to watch 95 minutes. Right. Wow. <laughs> well, I don't know what I don't know what you I don't know if you use TikTok that much, but I, I use it. I mean, I'm not I'm not a 95 minute a day man. I'm maybe a 95 minute a week man. Um, and the stuff I watch, it's it's much longer than 15 seconds. It might be a few minutes. Some of the stuff I watch, but um, but anyway, 95 minutes, right? Globally, what do you think the US average is? Uh, I think it's got to be a lot higher. Hmm. You're I mean, incorrect. That... You're oh, wrong. Right. I'm going to just going to stop you there. Oh, right. Okay. It's it's actually like well, according to the stats that the FT of no, actually it was the Economist pulled out this stat. So I don't know what if this is right, but look, they're a decent source in terms of their credibility. So they're saying 56 minutes a day for Americans okay. versus 95 as the global average. Hmm. Slightly surprised by that. Yeah. But there's a hundred, but I, I guess there's 170 million Americans. It's basically half of the American population. Mm. Um, and given 
I mean, I don't know what percentage of the population don't own a smartphone, but obviously the kids, I mean, well, kids get phones <laughs> pretty early on these days, right? But I don't know what the proportion of the population is, let's say under 10 years old. They're, they're, they're obviously not having a phone. So it's those that have phones, it's you know well over 50% of the population that have TikTok, uh, are a TikTok user, um, that is. And so I, I guess, yeah, that, I mean, we could tackle that, you know, an outsized influence on shaping public opinion. <laughs> what I found hilarious, I mean, such a, I mean, it couldn't have backfired any more. So the House of Representatives, so or maybe we should take a step back for a sec. For these, for, for anything to be voted as a, as a new law in America, there's kind of three pillars to their system, okay? It's the, it's the House of Representatives, it's the Senate, and then it's the President, right? The White House, and any bill um, needs to be voted through by all three parties, okay? Now, we know for sure Biden is all over this. This is Biden's bill. So you've got the, you've got the White House in the bag. They will sign this off, okay? The, Joe Biden will sign this off. Um, the House of Representatives, so they um, announced that they were going to vote on this bill on the 13th of March, okay? On the 6th of March, and, and remember, one of the things that the Americans are worried about is TikTok influencing public opinion. So what did TikTok do to try and stop this happening? On the 6th of March, they sent a notification to their users, encouraging all of them to call their own members of Congress to try and convince <laughs> them not to vote. So, there, and there were loads of, congressmen that were on the fence here not quite sure what to do and then they saw that they absolutely do have an influence this is the evidence of yeah. tiktok influencing a vote and so that's why it actually turned out to be a landslide vote through i mean it, it got voted through 352 to 65 so this was a big bipartisan you know almost fully backed bill in the house of representatives and TikTok, a massive own goal mm. in their attempt to try and um, influence it. And so just to be clear here, I mean, one of the things that the National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan in the States said, is that the goal is ending Chinese ownership, yeah. not actually banning TikTok. Because I think the headlines are all like, we're going to just ban TikTok. Yeah. Well, there's two. Uh, so I guess there's two solutions if this so well hang on before we talk about that i talked about the three pillars right so biden's going to sign it the house of representatives they've already signed that off but there's still that third hurdle to get over this now goes to the senate and it hasn't been voted through there yet only if it gets voted through the senate will this actually will this bill pass there's then still a legal a potential legal challenge that tiktok can present you know around you know, freedom of speech and, and this kind of stuff. But but will the Senate vote it through is really the next question. And here, it, it, I mean, obviously, you look at that House of Representative result and you think, well, surely it's just going to sail through. But there's a, a certain guy who's who's trying to put a spanner in the works on that. With his um, own influence. <laughs> right. Well, exactly. So basically, and this is absolute classic Trump. So I'm talking about Trump here because, I mean, I don't know. You you got you got to go back, but um, it was Trump himself that basically in back in 2020, for national security reasons, um, was forcing ByteDance to um, divest TikTok, and so therefore this is one of the options, right? TikTok, the U.S. part of the business. Um, Bike dance, sell it to a US buyer. Okay. And Trump was forcing this in 2020. So Trump himself was doing this. Now, here we are in 2024. What's Trump saying? The exact opposite. Trump has now come out in opposition to this idea. Why? Because he's self obsessed and he has billionaire backers who are bike dance shareholders. So self-obsessed, right? Basically, you'll remember the 
20, January 2021 riots on Capitol Hill in Washington. And obviously Trump um, has been accused of inciting those riots. Okay, And in response to that, he got deplatformed. He got cancelled. And Meta um, banned him from all of their platforms. Okay, Now, who would benefit from TikTok basically closing in America? Who Who is... TikTok's biggest rival, well, it's Meta, right? And it, through Instagram. And so who would benefit if TikTok suddenly vanishes? Well, Meta and Instagram would be the beneficiary. But here's Trump saying, and he actually, he said it, who would, be, Trump himself has said, who would benefit the most? It would be Meta. And so I don't think this should happen. And basically Trump saying, forget about national security now. <laughs> he just wants revenge. Uh, <laughs> Secondly, there's a guy called Jeff Yass. He's um, the owner, uh, billionaire, owner of uh, an investment firm called Susquehanna. Um, and he's a big donor to Trump. Uh, Susquehanna happens to be one of the biggest stakeholders in ByteDance. So, of course, who else would 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 get damaged here as shareholders of ByteDance? So, <laughs> um, yeah, it seems like Donald Trump um, is playing his self-obsessed sort of uh, game here and, and coming out in opposition, despite he was on exactly the opposite side of the argument four years ago. So, so, the, so the timing here seems particularly interesting because we have got, you know, the clock is ticking now down to the US election. And these things, like you said, there can be legal challenges and so forth. They can get dragged out for a prolonged period. So yeah, it will be interesting. If I, were tr if I was advisor to Trump, what I'd be saying is, right, we need to be having some backdoor meetings with Republican um, representatives in the Senate and saying to them, right, we are clearly going to win this election. And I want you beside me when that time comes. So yeah. you're going to do this, which is you're, you're not going to ban it. You're going to vote against it. And he will have his way. So, yeah, I don't know. This seems... When you explain it like that, particularly with the backing factor, yeah. um, you know, choice or no choice. I mean, if he serves his own personal agenda, he just wants power to be president. Come yeah. what may, everything else is inconsequential. I think that could be said of most politicians yep. uh, in, in that way. So, yeah, I, I just wonder whether that actually is the secret here that's going to mean that this actually doesn't manifest into what a lot of the headlines are suggesting. Yeah, indeed. Um, but look, let's just say it does, right? Yeah. Let's just say Trump fails to influence this and actually the Senate voted through. And let's just say, I mean, well, actually, let's just make another point here. The timing, as you say, is key, um, given the elections in November. But Biden's obviously wanting to get this done, like, before the election. I think Biden sees this as a real positive thing, you know, possibly um, in terms of his election race. But even if that, yeah, go on. I was just going to say, you said positive. Well, I, yeah, that's I why wonder, I like, so the demographic, you said that, okay, let's, let's strip out the bottom end. So anyone younger than 10, any yeah. old school people who are not so sophisticated with their phone. So there's a large proportion of people who are, who are TikTok users using it for an hour, you said in the US. If you ban it, <laughs> yeah. I wonder, you know, if you uh I wonder how much of a deciding factor that is. If you're impartial, neither this way or that, but you have a reason then to vote because you're like, I want to use TikTok, <laughs> not thinking about the bigger picture. I wonder yeah. if that could just be a catalyst to tip the balance. Yeah, indeed. So there, there's definitely risk here for Biden. But anyway, it seems like he wants to ram this through ASAP. Um, but look, then there could be a legal challenge and you know how long that could take. Yeah. So chances of this getting done before November, I don't know, it's pro probably unlikely, but um, you never know. But look, let's just say, let's just say it happens, right? Then ByteDance have got, well, they've got two choices. Um, one, they spin it off and sell it. And then obviously that would be their preferred choice because the second choice is, well, if they can't sell it, then, well, they'll have to close it down. Right now, from a you know, well, how much is this worth to bite dance? Well, it's hard to get data on this, to be honest. But 
Byte Dance, um, we know that they as a whole business generated 110 billion of revenue in 2023. Okay. Now it's believed that about four fifths of that was domestic revenue in China. It's not just TikTok um, that they own. They also own a, an app called Doyin and then another one called Taotiao, which is a news aggregator. So they're obviously they're a massive player in mainland China. So 110 billion, 80 uh, percent of that in China. So you've got 20 percent left. So that's like 22 billion dollars, right, of international revenue generated. Now, what proportion of that is in the U.S.? I, I don't know. Um, but you know, it's 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 going to be. I don't know. Let's just say as Actually, a while. I know the, the the advertising revenue for for TikTok U.S. is. Nine billion, I believe. Okay, I was going to say, let's guess ten billion. All right, yeah. so nine billion is about about there. So it's a nine billion dollar company, but there's no point in them going. Well, look, let's just spin off the American part because if this gets voted through, almost inevitably you're going to find other U.S. allies, you know, other Western countries doing the same. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but it's already happened. I mean, India have already banned TikTok. This was actually back in um, 2020. Uh, this was that in response to um, yeah, military skirmishes on the border with China. And so one of their, their kind of one of the Indian retaliations was to go, look, we're going to ban TikTok here for national security reasons. Um, so it has happened already in India. Who's to say, you know, the UK, Europe, who, whatever, right? Australia, you know, who's to say that they're likely going to follow, right? You would assume. So I think for ByteDance, I think this is more like, well, not spinning off the US part. It's really spinning off potentially, you know, X mainland China part in a way. So it gets really complicated here and that might complicate who the buyers might be. But look, let's see, let's see who the buyers might be because you've obviously got the big tech giants, right? Because the point I guess is, let's just say it's 22 million revenue right outside mainland China. This is a big company. We're not messing about here. Well, yeah, I, I read the figure that they were previously valued at around 300 billion. Right. What, <laughs> bite dance the whole company or is that's that's the US TikTok? Well, the, the, so the, stat I, the comment I had was the company I bite dance had previously valued the app at around right. 268 billion. Okay. Well, I think you can safely say we're talking north of 100 billion here, mm. valuation, let's just say roughly. So who can afford that? Not many, right? I mean, look, the, the biggest capital raise in history, that, that would like, I'm pretty sure that would double the biggest deal like ever done. I think the Saudi Aramco deal, what was that like, 25 billion when they IPO'd, I think, and that was like one of the... So anyway, that immediately eliminates the vast majority. So you've got the big tech giants. The problem there, of course, um, Alphabet and Meta particularly, well, forget forget that because the antitrust regulators would block that because of the uh, they already own a large portion of the advertising market, right? So they wouldn't allow Alphabet or Meta to come in and buy TikTok. So then you've got the other big tech giants, who are potentials, but again, there's p possible antitrust roadblocks. So you've got Amazon, um, you've got um, like Apple and Netflix, and actually both those last two, Apple and Netflix, they were both sniffing around in 2020 on this deal when Trump um, said, right, let's ban TikTok and force them to divest it. So both Apple and Netflix were interested and it would make sense like for Apple you know, obviously we're concerned about iPhone sales growth. So this would be a very nice way for them to enter that, you know, social media market that they've kind of missed out on. Uh, Netflix as well, you know, streaming subscriptions, you know, we're worried about growth on that. Um, so that makes sense. Yeah, I guess one thing is, is that in 2020, TikTok was like the emerging app, super like potential growing at an incredible pace. And I think, yeah, their revenues might have gone from, I think, US one to nine billion in the last four years. Yeah. But one of the things here would be, A, are you now going to pay too much because it's that much bigger? Uh, and then B, you're, you're buying what appears to be a little bit like 
an app, you know, with, with apps, I think you do always run the risk of with social media and the, you know, the evolution, the change that happens so quickly yeah. with technology that you can fall in and out of favor. Yeah. And, it, you know, it was only 12 months ago and we were kind of, you know, podcast titled the deathbed of Facebook. And here we are, you know, they are Phoenix and the flames sort of scenario. Yeah. Um, and, you know, flipping this on its head, a cu couple of stats here, um, because Instagram overtook TikTok in new app downloads last year. And the percentages, I think, are quite, quite meaningful. So Instagram's total number of app downloads grew 20% last year. Yeah. Whereas TikTok was up 4%. So it's, it has flipped quite a lot. I think one of the major things that I've read about, given that you know my job is to do a lot of content, is this idea about being able to have and achieve overnight viral success. But how do you monetize that? And you monetize it by converting your audience over to the more matured uh, platform in terms of getting paid. Yeah. Um, and then there's a couple of other things. You know, one thing that Zuckerberg is great at, obviously, he's shown throughout his career, is basically pinching other people's ideas. Um, and the real thing, which they implemented, uh, definitely has been a big game changer. Also, Instagram has benefited from bite dance. I don't know if you ever see on Instagram, you'll you'll see that they are there are TikTok watermarked videos that yeah. people share. So again, this is all part of that transferring of user base from one platform to the other, where actually it's almost again bite dance, almost shooting themselves in the foot, allowing right. their content to just be used, thinking that actually they're going to steal the users back. Yeah, it just hasn't happened. No, and it just hasn't happened. So I just wonder then is, you know, what is the yeah. appetite of big tech right. to even touch this thing? Right. So you, you make a very, very good point. You know, you can list off all these big tech firms. And yes, you could make a, a business case as to why it might be a good acquisition for an Apple, let's say. But you're right. If they wanted to buy them in 2020, well, that'd have been a great, great time to buy them and they've obviously had explosive growth but here we are in 2024 it's a much mature asset and as you say the trends aren't good and in fact their user numbers declined mm. so in quarter four of 2023 um they were down 12 million like and so when you start getting you know you saw what happened to um the meta share price a couple of years back when they started to they it almost looked like they'd reached peak usage and the user numbers started to decline and their share price got hammered. So the current trends, user trends for TikTok are not good. Um, and looks like Meta has really come that's back a, with their reels and, and stolen back the market. That's, that's another good point you made there, which is the demographic of the users. So right. TikTok is incredibly narrow and concentrated on the younger end of the spectrum. Whereas, as we know, Facebook kind of captures quite a multi-generational demographic because they have the Facebook platform, which is the old, the old geezers like you and I. And then you've got um, younger people who are still using Instagram. But one of the things here is because the two are so almost integrated that you get a blended usage case across people like you and I using Insta as well as using Facebook. Whereas would we use TikTok? I mean, I can say I never use it. I'm definitely, I, I think I clock about one minute a month. <laughs> so I've got um, some interesting stats here on, right. Take the user, take the TikTok user base and what other apps do they use? Right. So for example, the highest crossover is as you'd expect Instagram. So 80% of TikTok users also use Instagram, right? Next um, seven seventy-eight percent of TikTok users use YouTube. Then it drops off quite sharply. Fifty-three percent of TikTok users use X, and this one really surprised me. Only thirty-five percent of TikTok users use Snapchat. Hmm. Apparently, which I, like what from what I see with my kids, they use TikTok and Snapchat. That's it. Forget about even Instagram. Um, so I was quite surprised that there wasn't much of a crossover with snapchat um so what you're saying is there's not a lot of pickup then for no, well, these big tech firms yeah, well yeah 
that's that appears to be the case. So, um, and I think look, other quite I, I haven't mentioned Microsoft yet, but obviously, as we've been talking about, if you were an interested buyer in 2020, doesn't mean you're going to be an interested buyer in 2024. But Microsoft were in 2020, they submitted a bid not just for the American TikTok, also the Australian, the Canadian, and the New Zealand TikTok. So they were trying to buy all of those, but actually ByteDance backed off the deal um, because my, one of Microsoft's, um, one of the things with their bid is they wanted to take control of the app's data and the source code. And ByteDance were going, whoa, 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 you, you're not having the source code. Mm. And so the kind of deal sort of fell I'm apart. not sure if that would be too much of a deviation for Microsoft's current strategy of, I know there's AI integration into a lot of these platforms like TikTok and so on to optimize in certain ways. But yeah. I think that where they're heading is much more an enterprise scale. Yep. And so I don't really see that strategically as a fit. So there's one, and I'm talking about Microsoft by extension, the, the, the ex owner of um, Activision Blizzard, the founder, a guy called Bobby Kotick. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> he apparently is trying to, trying to convince Sam Altman to team up with him to try and raise some finance to uh, to 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 do this deal. Uh, so that's like an outlier. So outside of the big tech, you might not be interested anymore anyway, probably would get blocked by antitrust. You know, who's left with such a massive price tag? And this is ByteDance's issue. Um, and it might be that there aren't any buyers. In which case, well, um, happy days for Mark Zuckerberg, because do you want to know what happened in, in India? So when pre-TikTok being banned, um, inst so TikTok was the number one app download in India, okay? Um, Instagram was only sixth on the list of the most downloaded apps. Then they banned it in 2020, okay? By 2021, Instagram was number one top downloaded app in the country. So it went from sixth to first as a direct result of TikTok getting removed from the equation. So there's a lot to gain here from- yeah. So, so, so the, how we're talking then is the likelihood of um, the goal of ending Chinese ownership and this US buyer coming in is pretty small. So what about then, let's say there is a ban. What, what does a ban look like? Well, it gets removed. The app gets removed, right? From from app stores, right? App so store. Apple, Google, yeah, from Google Play, and it just just gets removed. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, this obviously has never happened, right? But I don't know in terms of. Do, I, I assume do do Apple have control over? Can they just switch the app? Off? I mean, you've obviously already got it downloaded on your own phone, right? Can they? Okay, I guess they can just switch it off on their end and it's not downloadable anymore. Yeah. And I'm sure you can still use VPNs and so forth to bypass restrictions if you really yes, wanted to access it. And look, there are a lot of people like thinking about from the other side now. There's a huge amount of Americans who who don't want to see this happen because they're very reliant on mm. TikTok as a platform to reach their audience, right? So, you know, there are people that would get you know, be, there'd be collateral damage here if they just suddenly pulled the plug overnight. Yeah, I, I wonder then, like thinking as now an advisor to Biden about this whole thing, going back to the political angle, is the is one of the main um, kind of things that Trump really leverages is China in previous election cycles. So you kind of take that weapon away from him by you're the one who's being the aggressor saying, you know, we want to safeguard the American economy for the best interests of the US people. And therefore we're being anti, appearing to be anti-China. And then you kind of take that away and force Trump to act on the other side. So actually for Biden, it's not really a case of this goes through, this doesn't go through. This is all just positioning for yeah. the election, essentially. Yeah. It's just, yeah, I guess these candidates want to be, they want to put themselves up as having opposing views and differences of opinion so that ultimately voters 
the, there's a, there's a different choice, right? Um, and you and you, I guess you pick a side. Um, so I guess Trump now has to pivot from China to just anti wokeness and double down yeah. on that as a key issue, and the DEI and all the rest of it will probably become more polarized. Probably, I would imagine. There are other things. I'm just looking here, like bite dance. They have been trying to allay concerns, you know, around around the the kind of uh, the security risks. So they've actually they've actually um, enlisted Oracle, which is obviously a U.S. company, importantly. Um, so Oracle, they've got Oracle in to fence off and like ring fence um, data from American users. So so they they. They are trying to segregate the businesses, but but ultimately, I don't know if the lawmakers will ever be satisfied that that gets you know one hundred percent bulletproof um, done, and and there'll always be that lingering risk. I would suspect that no matter how much ring fencing might be going on, um, there's always a there's always a hole in the fence somewhere. <laughs> when money's involved, Piers, there's always a hole. To, yeah. to find uh, but okay so look you've heard Piers and I discuss this but we want your opinion on whether you think this will go through or not and TikTok will be banned in the states or not so on Spotify if you're listening I'm going to drop a poll it's going to be ban no ban or if you listen to this and you've accessed it via LinkedIn or any of the other social feeds so drop us a comment and let us know what you think and if there's anything we missed and you want to add into the argument for or against, then uh, we'd love to hear. But yeah, thanks, Piers. No worries. See you later.